Um, hey, um, I'm Colum. This is Ludivine. Oh, sorry, maybe a bit closer. Uh, and we are from OSP, Open Source Publishings. Um, I'll talk to you about OSP quickly and then pass over. So OSP likes to define itself as a, as a sort of a caravan, a caravan in the sense that uh, the group of people that work with and along with OSP uh, is never really the same. It's always changing and some people commit all their time to it and then less time. So it's, it's very hybrid, it changes all the time. Um, and the group concentrates its activities around like uh, several different fields, um, somehow related to um, graphic design sooner or later. Um, some of the work is commissioned, some of the work is, res a lot of the work is research. There's some, ed uh, some educational ideas uh, and workshops done by the group. Uh, the group tries to travel and um, if anything, OSP tries to never really, thank you, settle down. Uh, settle down in the sense of never get too comfortable with uh, a way of working. Always try and question a way of working. Uh, whether it fits a certain purpose or whether it fits them, and research a lot, different possibilities. Um, so we're going to give you a quick talk about a project that we could call Along School Fences, and there you go. <laughs> okay, so um, what's new at uh, OSP, what is new is that we have no a place a place to, to work together. Um, from one year and a half, we occupy a, a room at variable, or variable, or variable. It, it works in the three language, so. Um, this is uh, a house where Constant, the association, um, is in residency until summer uh, 2040. So we have a place for store um, all our cooking uh, tools or collections of aprons and uh, plotters and and for sure it's also a place to meet together and to welcome people to meet people from outside to invite them. Um, so the thing is, so it's it's great. We are we are so happy. But the thing is that uh, after one year, six months, one year, we realized that uh, having a workspace uh, brought on an organization resembling <laughs> other graphic uh, resembling other graphic design offices. So we, we felt a bit uncomfortable to see uh, this glitch into some studio um, studio rhythm and habits which goes a bit against our practice and the logic uh, of the tools we use, um, because this logic is more uh, seeking to remain awake and um, constantly relearning. Um, but so we, we just ask ourselves, uh, is that what we really want? Um, wouldn't we want to focus more on research and new fields? So to bring back uh, uh, a bit of fresh air, we decided to revamp the trip and uh, the, 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 to travel again together, uh, to revamp the print party, and to, um, to, to all these activities that define OSP to, to, to get back together, to, to see things um, under a different, different light and to, to go forward together. So um, what you... You see here, perhaps you um, help me too. Uh, it's just pictures of a uh, different workshop we, we, we made. And, uh, and in this urge to uh, extend and diffuse um, th that knowledge and exchange with others and through our experience of workshops, uh, print party and courses, because most of us are, most of us are also teachers. Um, so we, we we realize and we notice how some of uh, the con how some of the context conditions of our practice can create frictions. 
Most of the problem come from the initial awkward and clumsy positioning of educator relative to student, to the student. So, three question is, is it the school frame or the academic um, setup that goes um, too far in, into fixing roles? Or is, is it the student or, of, or the participant themselves that keep um, we keep comfortable in, in the waiting postures? Or is it just us <laughs> that uh, uh, we're way to bring new objects without finding the ways to make them solidify? So the educator and educated uh, relation is something that we, we must perhaps be rid of. Is it uh, time to reimagine um, the, 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 the school new school context, and is it time to uh, jump over the school fences? That's the last uh, page. Okay. Okay, um, so I'm uh, Stephanie, I'm uh, the next OSP here. Um, so, like Ludivine said, uh, we encountered quite some limitations uh, during our different workshops or different uh, schools we teach in. And um, when we are invited or when we are hired in a school, we have to adapt ourselves to the institution um, and to the methods uh, applied there. And, and we, we uh, noticed that uh, using free software in such frames often doesn't work uh, because um, uh, it raises uh, a lot of questions. Uh, uh, there are really different tools, tools that uh, students are not familiar with, so it's um, a technical approach that we have to show, but also a cultural and uh, artistic approach. So that's a lot of stuff to, to bring in. And um, we, because we are also learning ourselves every day with our work, uh, it's really hard to uh, um, combine an experimental approach in a very institutional uh, school. So, as Ludivine said, uh, we are wondering if we could reverse the model of a teacher-student. Uh, can a student become a teacher at some point? Or can we just uh, try to remove that line? And uh, so we noticed with our different interns that uh, sometimes we're too busy with our work to, to, uh, to take care of them and we were really interested in some experimentations, for example, with Metafont, and we asked our interns to explore this and in the end they uh, became our teacher and, uh, and then we were so excited that uh, we all went uh, into getting our hands dirty with that and uh, it was a really great uh, way to, uh, to exchange knowledge. Um, so uh, the institution I, I, I was telling about is also the space. Uh, because we are in the physical space of uh, someone else, we have to uh, comply to their rules and their methods. So that's why we try to make this happen in our own space in a variable in a Belgium, Brussels, um, to try to not be influenced by, uh, by such rules. Um, the amount of time is also an issue. Uh, usually uh, in workshops, it's a very short workshop, and uh, either one day or five days. And we experienced this year, um, uh, during four months, we were going to a school uh, one week a month. So it was a much longer time. Uh, those who teach are teaching all year long, so it's uh, different. Uh, time frame, but uh, during workshops uh, where we push for experimentations, um, uh, it's really hard to because the the students expect a production. Um, it's really hard to uh, bring um, the aspect of uh, actually not necessarily um, end uh, end up with a production. Uh, we are interested in, uh, in the travel. Uh, there's this beautiful quote that Pierre uh, for, uh, found on the tango, uh, saying that tango is uh, very baroque and not classical, and that the, because it, 
it's the trip uh, which is important and not uh, the goal. And uh, he replaced the Tango by free software and I found that very beautiful. Um, so we're interested in the trip, in the experiments and the, and, uh, the yes, uh, of, uh, rather than the end object. And if we end up with a great project at the end, it's, uh, it's, it's great. And uh, so uh, we will talk about the work sessions that we thought of later, but um, uh, we should have looked a bit more at what was existing and happening now, actually, like Interactivos 2014, who made an open call for projects to be developed, uh, research, and projects who don't exist yet, and, uh, and, and and looking for people who don't know how to make them either, or and all looking, searching together. Okay, so um, so now um, with OSP, we're uh, uh, growing. We're even more than ten people, and even if we decided to collaborate together, it's sometimes hard. Uh, to, co to collaborate at more than three people without getting mad. <laughs> and it's not, and, and, um, um, and it's even harder to collaborate while trying to keep everyone um, uh, busy with all the different um, aspects of the project. So not to, to make, a, uh, like streamlining the process or trying to keep everyone involved in, in, in all the places. Um, so, um, and on one hand, uh, we are using tools, uh, I'm thinking about Git, but uh, there are many examples, mailing lists, uh, uh, many other tools uh, that are already like very um, like complex and intelligent tools. Uh, if you look at Git, for instance, it's, it's quite um, uh, articulated uh, tool to collaborate, um, but it, it addresses uh, certain uh, issues. But on the other hand, uh, we also um, feel uh, the need for other tools, or new tools, um, tools uh, that can help us to, to, to design together, to take decisions together, uh, etc. And also, uh, yeah, and importantly, to give everyone a voice as well. Um, so yeah, we 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 need to. Um, and there is no. Well, I don't have much slides, <laughs> many slides. Um, so we need to. The the question is how we can create new tools to collaborate, and how uh, what are the tools we can imagine, and. Also, before uh, uh, speculating on new tools, uh, or in parallel, maybe, uh, is there any existing tools in other fields that we could reappropriate um, to, to work together? Um, so, um, and tools that can create a, a richer experience, and not, like I said before, not uh, streamlining the process, but rather enriching the experience of everyone involved uh, in the process. Um, so, when we talk about tools, um, we, we don't only think about, uh, like, of course, uh, uh, digital tools, um, tools, uh, mechanical tools, or uh, special tools, or, but it can also be like uh, social, intellectual uh, tools, even physical tools. Um, and so, we are actually using these tools um, every day, but some tools are so deeply internalized that we don't even realize no more there are tools. So for instance, the fact that we can just sit together in this room and, and listen silently for hours um, is, is, is already quite something uh, impressive, I think, if you think about it. Uh, but it, we, we don't realize it no more because it's, it's very internalized socially. Uh, so when we talk about tools, we, we, we also think about this kind of tools, tools to invent. Um, 
And um, I would like to give you uh, um, a small example of uh, one tool we are trying to uh, explore right now. Uh, and it's not, um, it's not like ideal tool. Uh, it's even problematic in some cases, but it's something called uh, socio sociocracy. <laughs> And it's a social tool. Uh, I, I will make you a very um, uh, uh, like a simplified explanation because it's much more complex. But I also don't know much uh, very well all the the big picture. Uh, but basically, the principle is that everyone sits in circle. So we use this kind of tool when we want to. Uh, I was about to say to have a consensus, but they, um, the people who invented this uh, technique call about, uh, talk about consent. So when we want to, let's say, reach a decision and, and we don't agree, and, 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 and sometimes it's hard to, 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 to get your, your voice uh, heard because uh, you're, uh, you're not very comfortable speaking in public or whatever. Uh, so basically, everyone sits in circle, and, and um, everyone uh, spe uh, speak in each in turn, and there is no interruption possible. And uh, the, the, the speaker change uh, when the previous speaker doesn't have anything to add. And so you speak in circle like this until the consent is reached. Uh, um, and and there is no more objection, and you uh, you can reach this consent or not consensus, but consent. Uh, I don't know. It's, I'm in time. Off. We have no time. Okay. <laughs> um, yes. So I, I will be super quick because I like the fact that uh, uh, everyone tries to. Uh, keep it keep it short, but maybe something to question also is the object it's itself. We've seen that when we insert free software in a school uh, as an object, it's immediately uh, a question. And uh, to to help us uh, think with, as Chris was saying yesterday, uh, let's raise big names um, for three minutes. Uh, Jacques Otto was um, 200 years ago uh, a teacher, a French teacher forced by the political government to teach uh, French literature to Dutch students in Belgium and he wasn't speaking Dutch at all so he found a book in the library um, with a translation and he gave that book to the student insisting on for them to uh, study super closely a few paragraphs and uh, by uh, seeking all the articulation to at some point learn the whole literature from that, that super particular uh, situation. And it seems that it has worked well, well enough to inspire a lot of uh, psychologists of the education and so, and to make uh, Jacques Rancière, a French philosopher, to wrote a book called The Ignorant School uh, Master, that's that tried to, to catch exactly what happened and um, taking into as a hypothesis that uh, anyone can teach something that he don't know if he use a, a fertile uh, third object the book in the case of Jacotto, and or uh, ambitious intuition uh, could be that the free software could be that object for our school. And this uh, third name uh, is even a bit more trickier to bring here, is uh, Winnicott, that um, roughly said, try to explain that when you are super young, a baby, uh, your mother tried to make you accept that uh, her breast is not part of you, and that's an illusion by giving you a curly toy or a peluche or a doudou in French um, to, to, <laughs> wow, to make you understand that uh, you can have some level of confidence and security, but in the same time, when you lose it, 
uh, you cry, uh, and may maybe after a few uh, minutes you have it back, but you, you, you need to be autonomous uh, regarding that object, and after you develop and you use other kinds of objects. And the idea of Stiegler, another philosopher who full of ideas, is that the object, that object could be called as a pharmacon, as something that can in intoxicate a society through, through passive consummation, but could be super uh, fulfilling uh, if you uh, gain autonomy with it. And our intuition is to do something with that for the schools. So how do we work with such an object? Well, uh, for one, enthusiasm is very important. Um, how can we uh, have students get their hands dirty? Because getting your hands dirty is the only way to learn. Um, we know, we can imagine, for example, learning about layout and the shared object of all this technology through uh, doing a manual LED typesetting, which would be a, a dirty experience. Um, and, 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 but software is often clean, um, and we've been trying different ways of uh, having the bodily experience sort of uh, enter this and see, is there in this, is there, how can you have the same experience of fiddling and of trying and of learning by trial and error in this, this shared object of the uh, free software? Um, and uh, so this is in Valence, uh, and then we go uh, to uh, Pierre. I definitely can't speak as fast as Eric, so because we run short of time, I will drop some word, keywords from my conclusion. That, that was like two words, digital sensitivity, commit to the collective, deal with heritage, and revolve. And that will be enough, I think. So. <laughs> So workshop session one, can it scale to the universe? Exactly. Um, uh, we are work session two, stroke font and meta font, and work session three is cast to, to be, uh, to, is open with cask to be discussed. Okay. So, welcome. Varia. <laughs> oh, send us an email uh, to, to, if you're interested in participating, <laughs> so the, 